Hello Patho India. Uh, my name is Jared Gardner and I'm a dermatopathologist and bone and soft tissue pathologist practicing in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, Dr. Johnson asked me to give some remarks um, in honor of the 15th year anniversary of Patho India. That of course was almost two years ago now and um, I've been much delayed in making this video. So now you're coming up on 17 years which even in my own life is a long time. When Patho India was founded in 1999, I was not even graduated from high school yet. I had not really begun my medical career, although I had an idea that I wanted to be a doctor and also wanted to be a pathologist because I worked in a private pathology lab in Florida where I was from. And um, that, you know, if 17 years is a long time in real life, at least in my life, it's a very, very long time in the internet world. In, in the online world 17 years ago, there was no Facebook, there was no Twitter, there was no social media at all, and as many of you probably know, I'm, I'm very much involved now in social media. And so when I thought about what I would like to talk to such a prestigious group of pathologists who have been true innovators and leaders as far as becoming organized in the digital world, as you all have, uh, I wanted to talk to you all actually about social media. We, we many of us use social media um, for a variety of reasons, for friends or family, uh, many of you probably use it to learn pathology, and there are large Facebook groups now that, that share pathology images and cases for education. But one thing that I've, I've come to recognize over the past few years as I've gotten very active in social media is that social media gives us as pathologists a way to, to change our public image. Uh, many people in the past have looked at pathologists kind of as, uh, you know, introverted people who like to hang out in the basement and uh, not talk to anyone. And Obviously, I, I'm not that way, and most pathologists that I know are not that way, actually. And um, the, the reason I think that those stereotypes and perceptions uh, continue to persist in the public is there are a variety of reasons, but one of the big reasons is that no one ever meets pathologists, right? Patients meet surgeons, they meet internists, they meet other doctors of all types. But pathologists are very much behind the scenes, yet, as you all know, what we do is incredibly important for patient care. So I think that it's important for us to help patients understand what we do and to help the public understand what we do um, because there are probably new generations of, of young, impressionable, bright minds out there that might be interested in being pathologists if only they knew about it. And that was my case. I, I found out about it luckily because I had a friend whose mother was a histotechnologist and laboratory manager and um, at a pathology lab, and that's how I got that job where I had exposure to five different pathologists who were fantastic and really kind of made an impact on me. And when I went to med school, I knew from the beginning that I wanted to be a pathologist because I had that early exposure. And now with social media, we can um, give that opportunity to any middle schooler or high schooler who uses Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or, or any other of the other types of social media platforms out there. So I think if your group is looking for the next innovative move forward, I would encourage all of you as members to begin using social media to share publicly information about our specialty, whether it be cases, pictures, any number of things that we can share about what we do. It's important, I think, that the public understands why we are crucial to the practice of medicine and why we don't just do autopsies on dead people, which is what a lot of people think, but that we actually, many of us at least, the bulk of what we do every day is taking care of living people by diagnosing cancer or other diseases by looking at glass slides. And then of course there's a wide range of other things that pathologists do, and I think that we really could do a better job of educating the public. And I recently actually uh, surveyed many of my followers online um, through Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and I asked some questions about the kinds of things that, that they thought about the work I was doing with social media. And I was really blown away within four, uh, four and a half days, I received 1,100 responses. And actually I was very pleased that after the United States, the second most number of responses came from India. Over 100 people from India took my survey and um, told me what they thought about the work I was doing with social media. And it was really, to me, very touching. Over 1,000 people left comments um, and told me uh, different different things that, that they thought was beneficial about my posts. and. The thing that I realized from it is, is there are so many other pathologists out there just like me. You're doing good patient care. You're interested in teaching and in educating others and sharing what we do. The only difference is that I've been using a very strong, powerful public platform to share the kind of work that I'm doing. Um, and so that for me, that's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I think if more pathologists did that, we would have an incredibly powerful public voice. 
that really could change the face of our profession, the way that we're viewed by others, and really could potentially lead to collaborations um, that would be changing uh, for the face of medicine as a whole. So one way that I've, I've done this uh, recently that I've, I've seen some really amazing results is that I began working with um, rare cancer patient groups on Facebook. So even for me, I'm, I'm someone who likes to kind of push the envelope a little bit, but it was a little bit scary for me, I suppose, to join a patient group. And that's what I did, though, back in 2014. I joined um, a dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans support group. And uh, the person who started the group uh, welcomed me, and I, I announced that I was a doctor, a pathologist, that I diagnosed DFSP and other cancers like it, and that I was just interested in helping, not to give medical advice, but just to help them uh, understand their disease better and educate them about their disease and, and learn from them uh, what their experience was like. And the, the person who started the group, she told me that, that in, I guess at that point it had been uh, six, no, I'm sorry, almost eight years that the group had been around, they said that no one, no, it was six, six years since she had founded the group. And I was the first doctor or any medical professional to ever join the group and ask those patients what they thought about their disease. That was very dramatic and kind of mind blowing for me to think that there was this huge group. There were at that time, 600 DFSP patients out there. I, I'm sure that none of you have seen 600 DFSPs because I haven't. I've seen maybe 75 or, or 100 or so in my career so far. And I, and I see, I specialize in skin and soft tissue pathology. So I think it was really amazing to see that many patients gathered in one place. And I have taught them things, but I've learned so much from them about what their experience is like as patients. And it's given me a different level of compassion and really caution, I think, in the way that I do my job. I really think about that diagnosis now before I make it. I really go out of my way to make sure that I've excluded it or ruled it in if I have any uncertainty because I realized that you know the surgical scars that these patients receive are very dramatic, and, and I realize other aspects of, of what it's like now to be a patient because I've interacted with so many patients online. And in turn, I, I've also in the past surveyed these patients, and what they've said is overwhelmingly that having a pathologist in their group was a beneficial thing. They loved getting a chance to interact with someone that they normally did, they not even known existed before, someone like a pathologist who's behind the scenes uh, they said it's really amazing and beneficial as patients to get a chance to interact with a pathologist and learn from a pathologist. I would love to see more pathologists joining patient groups. And if we just use a little bit of common sense and compassion in the way we interact with patients um, in this setting, I think that there's very minimal risk to us uh, professionally, but there's enormous amounts of gains that can be had and beneficial things can happen from it. So one of those things is that the patients actually asked me if I would conduct a research study on their group. And so I got approval from my uh, internal review board, the, the board that manages uh, ethical um, issues around research in the United States. And they, they actually thought it was a great idea because, especially because the patients came up with the idea, the patients wanted the research to happen. And uh, they loved that fact that it was a patient-centered research project. And so uh, we've done some, some preliminary research using a survey. We surveyed um, those patients, and about 200 patients with DFSP responded to a survey in just the period of a few weeks, which it will be, we're working on the manuscript now, it'll be the largest survey study of DFSP patients ever done. And it, if you go to the largest cancer centers in the world, I would argue that they would have a hard time getting that many people with a rare disease to respond to a survey in such a short time, but we were able to do it because of the power of Facebook, because all these patients are right there together in one group. And then we've moved on from that now and received a IRB approval to, to conduct a much larger prospective study where we're going to enroll the patients in a um, identifiable registry or database. Uh, and then we're going to track the patients over time, over five, 10, even 15 years using Facebook to keep in touch with them so that we can see how many of them get recurrences and if there's something that can tell us what will predict which patients get recurrences and which ones don't. DFSP doesn't usually metastasize, but it tends to recur locally quite often and can really be a problematic issue for the patient because of the surgical management and the huge scars that happen because of it. So um, we, we are going to follow these patients up and we just recently opened that study and already have uh, quite a few patients that have uh, signed up. So it's really exciting to see um, 
see the possibility to do research even it, that will you know hopefully change the way patients with DFSP are managed in the future. And I, I think that this could be done with any different disease. There are, there are patient groups for the vast majority of rare diseases and of course common diseases on Facebook and all they're waiting for is a pathologist who has the interest and time to, to come and meet with these people and say, hey, how can I help you? How can I help your, your group? How can I support the cause of your disease? Let me tell you, no patient is gonna turn you away when you come and approach them with that attitude. And I think that's exactly the kind of thing that patients need to see, that pathologists, we're doctors. We care about patients. We, we do patient care every day. And we want to participate in the process of helping patients. And, and who better to meet with patients with a rare disease than pathologists? Many of us have experienced, a lot of experience with rare diseases, much more maybe than many surgeons or oncologists might have purely by the basis of the fact that if you work at a large referral center, you see so many more cases kind of brought in from all over. And in a given day, I see a lot more rare cases than probably most of the doctors get a chance to, just because I can see a lot of slides in a day. So I think that it gives us a, a really unique perspective to be able to understand uh, the disease, to be able to explain the disease at a tissue level, which surprisingly, even lay people who are patients, they want to know. They, the, I work also with an angiosarcoma group, and recently they asked me about, well, how does this look microscopically? So I showed them a picture with some arrows and explained you know, that these were atypical endothelial cells lining a blood-filled space, and they all responded so well. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe that would be disturbing to them, but they said, no, we want information. We're desperately craving information, and our own doctors either don't know or don't have the time to give it to us in a short clinical visit. And so to have a pathologist online where they can go and just ask an unofficial question to, to better their understanding of their disease to them, that's priceless. And to me, it takes me, you know, a couple minutes and I can do it in my spare time. And I've never once in almost three years of doing this now, or I guess two and a half years of doing this now, I've never once had a patient come to me and complain and say, you know, why didn't you respond more quickly? Or, or you know, they know that I'm giving my spare time to do this and they're incredibly thankful and appreciative. And um, it, on a personal note, I guess to me, has been really a life-changing experience to meet with these patients, to see what they go through, it reminds me of why I do my job. And when I have a late night, it reminds me of why it's important that I continue to focus and, and provide the same high quality care that I always try to, because there is someone's wife or, or brother or son or grandmother on the other side of that slide who's waiting for a diagnosis so that they can get appropriate care. And I, I think we all know that that's what we do as pathologists. We all recognize that that's the importance of our job. But I think that we could help share that vision and that importance with a lot of other people, and we can use social media to do it. So if you don't have a public Twitter account yet or a public Facebook page, I would encourage you to consider doing that so that you're not just using social media to, to network and learn, which is a great thing to use it for, but that you're also using it to publicly share information that you have about pathology uh, with anyone out there in the world who's interested in learning. and. I know you might not think there are people out there who are interested in what we do, but I guarantee you from personal experience, they're out there and they're waiting for us to tell them what pathologists do. So in summary, I would like to congratulate you, Patho India, on your long and illustrious career as an online group of pathologists. You have been a wonderful representation of the contributions of Indian pathologists not just to your local communities and hospitals or even nationally to the practice of pathology in India, but you have a worldwide presence through your leadership and online activities. I think that you are perfectly situated to take the next step and continue to expand your reach uh, globally through use of social media. You really can make a difference. You've made a great impact so far, and I look forward to seeing what the next 17 years will bring uh, for your group. Uh, best wishes to all of you and thanks very much.